सौशील्य गुण अभिकृत सौशील्य गुण अभिकृत अत्र भगवद उपदिष्ट रहस्य ज्ञान उद्धवात प्राप्य स्वस्य तत्र अयोग्यता मत्वा अति निर्णय विद्रोह मनसी परामर्श विदुरा ही स्पोक विद उद्धव एंड फ्रॉम उद्धव ही केम टू नो दैट लॉर्ड हैज स्पोकन द सीक्रेट टू हिम राइट ही वाज टॉकिंग बिफोर दैट दैट रहा विद्या दैट सीक्रेट और ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज एंड उद्धव डिड नॉट टेल दिस टू हिम because when he asked that can you please tell me gyanam param swatna rah prakasham yada yogeshwari swasti that what lord spoke to you can you also tell this to me so those people who are interested in knowledge when they know that somebody knows something which he doesn't know and they become very eager to get it and the other said no he cannot get it so now he is thinking that actually i am not qualified for this that's why the word in that time so thinking that he is not qualified he became very very dejected ati nirvan in his mind he felt very sad that i am so unqualified that i cannot know this secret and thinking like this in his mind he deliberated in the following manner what did he think tasya anuraktasya munair mukunda pramod bharana takandharasya this is about maitreya where udha has spoken that when he heard then matreya was also present at that time in the last chapter that at that time matreya muni who was very much devoted to lord krishna and whose shoulders were bent by the happiness of meeting krishna ashrinvato maam anuraga hasa samiksha vishram mishramaya uvaj that when he was in his presence lord krishna he spoke to me with great pleasure so uddhava has told this to vidura that when lord krishna spoke this knowledge matreya was also present so now vidura is remembering that paramantrang swabhakt chudamani uddhavam eva bhagwan rahasyam svagyanam upadesh but from this verse it is also clear that krishna spoke only to uddhav matreya was present there but it says ashanvato maam anurag hasa samiksha vishwam uvacha that lord spoke to me while he was hearing that means krishna did not really speak to matreya he only spoke to uddhava so vidura also understood this that lord gave the secret knowledge only to uddhava who is the topmost devotee and very very intimate with him natu shrinvantam api matreyam and he did not speak to matreya all the matreya was also listening so it is that sometimes the speaker is speaking to one person the others may listen but he is speaking only to that person that krishna is speaking bhag bhagavad gita to arjuna sanjay also heard it and hanuman says that he also heard it because he was sitting on the flag But he didn't. Krishna was not speaking to them. Mm-hmm. 
तदहम तज्ञानाथम इमं अजानत महानुभाव प्रथम न प्रार्थिष्य सो देर फोर विदुराइज से दट सिंस आई नो दिस दैट लॉर्ड स्पोक द मोस्ट कॉन्फिडेंशियल नॉलेज टू उद्धव एंड नॉट टू मैत्रेय सो आई विल नॉट आस्क हिम दिस डायरेक्टली बिकॉज ही मे फील एम्बेस्ड बाई दिस इज देर फोर आई एम नॉट फर्स्ट गोइंग टू प्रे टू हिम फॉर दिस अजानत महानुभाव किंतु स्वयं जिज्ञासित यत्चित पृछा राधर आई एम गोइंग टू आस्क हिम समथिंग फ्रॉम माई ओन साइड इंस्टेड ऑफ जस्ट सेंग प्लीज टेल मी दैट सीक्रेट विच कृष्ण गेव टू दिस आई विल नॉट डू दैट यदि च तदय जानाति तदभो विदुर तदर्थम भगवताहम आदिष्टो भगवत प्रोक्त तस्य अजत्व जन्मत्वादि विरोध पर हारिकमी रहस्य ज्ञान व्रतम गृह स्वामे वक्षति सो दिस इज ग्रेटनेस ऑफ विदुर दैट इंस्टेड ऑफ आस्किंग दैट कॉन्फिडेंशियल नॉलेज विच ही वॉज वेरी मच ईगर टू हियर एंड ही वन आस् दिस टू उद्धव now when he meets matreya who was directed by krishna to speak to vidura he is not asking the same thing to him knowing that lord krishna actually did not speak this to him so it may be improper for me to ask him and i am not even sure whether he got this or not so he says i am going to ask him something else and since krishna himself has directed matreya to speak to me If Matreya feels that he has to give this knowledge, then he will give it himself, and it is better that way. Instead of asking him, and then Matreya may feel uncomfortable. That why is he asking this, and who told this to him? And even Krishna did not speak this to me. So he says, if he has understood it and. Krishna actually wants him to speak to me, then he knows it, of course, and then he will tell me that how Krishna is unborn yet he takes birth. He has no desires, and yet he is always working, and he is self-satisfied. Atma Rama, yet he has married so many wives. What is the secret behind all this? So he will speak, and he will say, "Okay, Vidura, you also take this knowledge from me." So. For this reason, he did not ask this. So he has faith that what Krishna want me to hear, that I will get because Krishna has himself remembered Vidura while departing from Earth planet. So for this reason, he asked this question, which is such an interesting question. And this is one of the very interesting questions, and. it is not religious or sectarian it is a universal question everybody should ask this question it's not something that uh, there is god or there is no god of course ultimately the very question is implying this that number one we are ignorant and we includes everybody Not even the most intelligent people on earth, and they may be Nobel laureate or whatever billionaires. Now billionaires are committing suicide. In America, few billionaire people committed suicide because they think they are they have lost money. Can you imagine? So they are also unhappy. So that means everybody in this world. is ignorant because they cannot get what they want everybody wants happiness and nobody is getting it so what does this signify that nobody really knows how to be happy number 1 and second corollary there is a theorem and then there is a corollary to the theorem that because we don't know therefore what we are doing is wrong we act to attain happiness we don't get it that means we were wrong in our action 
If I want to go from here to Delhi, I take the road, and if the road is right, then I reach Delhi. And if I am not reaching Delhi, then I have taken the wrong, wrong road. It's very simple. So if we want happiness, we work for it and we don't reach our goal, that means we took the wrong path. So everybody is taking a wrong path for attaining happiness. So the question actually is not sounding religious or theistic or anything to do with God, but actually that is hidden in it. There is one beautiful verse in Upanishad which says that if you can cover the whole sky, Charmavad Akasam Vestyanti Yadajana. Like you cover your body with sweater, if you can cover the whole sky with skin or leather, then you can hope to be happy without accepting God. <laughs> So there is no question of happiness without surrendering to God. It's not possible. And that's that's why he is asking this question in a, such a neutral manner. Because nobody is going to object to this question. तई कर्म भी सुखम व अन्यत दुख उपसमम व उपारम वैराग्यम व न विंदेत सेस बाय परफॉर्मिंग आवर एक्शंस वी डोंट गेट हैप्पीनेस नॉर वी आर बिकमिंग फ्री फ्रॉम द मिसरीज किंतु भूयो भूय कृतेभ्य स्तेभ्य कर्मभ्य दुखमेव रादर फ्रॉम ऑल आवर एक्शंस we attain misery. So, in the material world, every every solution is a problem. Every solution has a problem hidden inside it. You get fever, so you take tablet, and your fever is gone, but something else comes from it. Then you may get a little crazy in the head. And you sleep too much, or you cannot swallow sleep, or your liver is spoiled, you lost your appetite, something. So every medicine brings you some another problem. So every every solution here leads to another problem. You find solution for one disease, and then that medicine itself is going to create another one. First of all, you have to manufacture that medicine. That manufacturing is also going to create pollution. And then that pollution will create another disease. Then you have to find a solution. So you are always in that network. And you can never get out of this network. So this is the meaning that it leads to Dukkha. And it's not that you are always getting Dukkha, always getting misery. In between, you are given a test of happiness, like a carrot hanging in front of the donkey's mouth. But that carrot is tied to the head and it is sufficiently away from his mouth that if he, even if he takes out his tongue, he will not touch it. So he sees the carrot hanging and it is just in his reach. So he goes on walking. And <laughs> as he walks, the carrot also moves further because it's tied to his head. So the distance is maintained. He never finds it. So it looks like that I'm just going to get it. I just got it. It does not happen. So in the material world also, in between, we are given a dream 
of happiness. Otherwise, how will we continue? And if we are not going to get the dream, then we will start dreaming that this misery is also happiness. The pig is lying in India, not, not, not in the West. But Indian pigs are lying in the dirty water. They are happy. And if human beings have to lie like that, they will not be happy. But if they will be forced to do that after some time, they will also get used to it. It will not be misery anymore. So we can also turn one into another. But we don't get what we want. So therefore his question is, Atra prasne yad uktam tad uttram na asman vadatu bhava. So he says, what is the appropriate answer for this question? Please inform me that. I want to hear it. So this is the million dollar question which everybody should ask. We should just actually write a book on this one verse. Such an interesting verse. So then he comes next. Now Vidura being a devotee, he reveals a little more. Janasya Krishna Advi Mukasya Deva Dadharma Silasya Sudukhitasya Anugrahaiha Charantinunam Bhutani Bhagyani Janardhanasya He says that the great people they are wandering here on this earth for the welfare of humanity. Bhutani Bhagyani Janardhanasya. The devotees of the Lord, they are existing and wandering on the face of the earth only to give welfare to people. Anugrahai Yacharanti Nunam. To which people? Janasya Krishna Dvimukhasya. For people who are not devoted to Krishna. But they don't know. Daivat, because of their misfortune. Adharma Srilasya, and therefore they are engaging in irreligious acts. And as a result, Sudukhitasya, they are very, very miserable. So he has now actually given the reason that people due to ignorance they act irreligiously and because they act irreligiously then they become miserable and this is their fate and the cause, ultimate cause for this is because they are not devoted to the Lord. Janasya Krishna Vimukhasya. Their face is turned away from Krishna, which means they are taking pleasure only in the sense objects. So, devotees are existing to give their blessings, and blessing is in the form of knowledge. So, he says, Sarva Bhuta Anugrahaka. Bhavad Vidha Mahabhagavata Evan Tattvam Jananti. Says the great devotees like you, they know the reality and they want to do welfare to the humanity. So, Bhavyani Bhutani Mangal Rupa Bhakta. So, these are the devotees of the Lord. They are auspicious. In fact, that is the only auspiciousness here on earth. And this is the great fortune if one can meet people like this. Because then only one's life will change. Otherwise, it is not possible. So we are thinking that we don't need guru or we don't need teacher or guidance. But Shastra says that 
without the association of saintly people, there is no succession to material miseries. So, Sadhu Sang, Sadhu Sang, Sarva Sastra Kal, Lave Matra Sadhu Sang, Sarva Siddhi Hai. And Sadhu means Guru, because he is teaching, he gives knowledge. That's why he said that Sarubhut Anugrahaka Bhavadvida Mahabhagavata Evam Tattvam Jananti. That they know the truth, they know the tattva. So as Krishna says, Dekshanti Te Gyanam Gyaninas Tattva Darshan. Because they know tattva, therefore they can give knowledge. So only such people can do welfare to humanity. There are many welfare organizations in this world. Many, many. Welfare for animals, welfare for birds, for fish, for poor people, for those who are suffering from AIDS, for women, widows, all types of, for drug addicts, various types of welfare societies. And they are all faring well. But the real welfare is one who knows Krishna. So, Yei Krishna Tattvata Sai Guru Hai. Because he can give knowledge about Krishna. And then this cycle will stop. Otherwise, Krishna Vimukhasya Deva Dharma Silasya. As long as one does not become a devotee of Krishna, then one will remain in this cycle of action and reaction and go on suffering. So he is going to speak 16 verses before Matriya will answer him. Our nature is such it and under. Who says? Says in Shastra, I can't quote you where, but. <laughs> I just said I can't quote you where, but I have heard it many times. <laughs> yeah, when first to figure that out. Okay, okay well, let me say it another way, like the Dura. <laughs> um, because our nature is not such a Dhananda. <laughs> because if our nature is such a Dhananda, then our problem is solved. Well, that was my question, is that... <clears throat> I have always understood that our nature is such at another, and yet we're placed into an environment where that, that very nature is the source of um, our continued problem. Um, right, because I've always understood that the desire for happiness comes from from within our nature, and uh, um, but now we're put into this material realm where it's not just not possible to, to fulfill that, right? Well, one way I can answer is that if you are already such Ananda and you know it, then why you have to fulfill anything because you are Ananda? If I'm, my stomach is full and because of illusion I think I'm hungry, then all I have to know is that I am an illusion. Then I don't have to eat because I'm full. So if I'm Ananda and out of ignorance I'm thinking that I'm not Ananda and therefore I'm looking for Ananda. So now when I come to know that I'm Ananda, then it should stop. Because I don't have to do anything. I am already Ananda. Right? 
How do you like that logic? <laughs> when you realize it, but I'm trying to bring up the <coughs> point is that it's like a dog has to bark, hmm. it's his nature, right? so we're conditioned here, and that conditioning comes, if I'm right, that conditioning comes from um, between our real nature and the environment that we're in. And in that environment we're in, we can't fulfill that real nature. Am I right? Fulfillment, sir. Because you're Ananda and that nature is not be Ananda. Happy. You can't be happy here. Yeah, but the nature is not going to give you happiness. Happiness is already in you, mm. as you're saying. So you'll not get it from the nature. From outside. You have to stop that. searching outside. Hmm. And when you stop searching outside, then you will be Ananda, which you say is your nature. Hmm. So that means you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is stop. undo. Yes, stop. And that is very difficult. Hmm. You have to just stop. And you are already your own. So by doing, we are making a mess. Yes, yes. That's what he says, Sukhaya karmani karoti loke, nave sukham vata, anne bhuparam. Let's see. Non-action is something like that.